My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slay the Spire Downfall. Uh, I know that I said that I was going to be doing this off camera, but I recognize that if I get even one experience point, I am about to unlock another set of... Oh, that happened again. Cool. I'm about to unlock another set of cards and I'd like the unlock of another set of cards to be on camera. So uh, I'm not necessarily intending to win this. Oh, sure. Apotheosis. Nice. Not necessarily intending to win this run. This is very much just go a couple spaces, get a couple points, concede. I mean, like, I should already have enough, right? Literally just loading into the run. All right. But it shouldn't take us too long to finish this fight. I do hope this works. Otherwise, we'll uh, go back to the slime bound for the episode. I guess by the thumbnail, you will already know <laughs> what happened. Uh, I shouldn't have attacked you because I could have over defended and then used the spikes on the back line. I'm, I'm, I'm not engaging my brain right now. This is this is no brain time. This is just click cards. It's like cookie clicker, but they're cards. Come on. Speeding through it. Come on. A couple more strikes, please. A single strike in the next hand. Need to draw two strikes at the very bottom of the deck if I actually want to be able to do anything here. But at least we got the defense. Okay, cool. Dead. Loot blows. Stick a priming beam. Move to the next space. And then... Uh, wait, hang on. I can't just... Oh, yeah, I can. I can. No, not. Uh, abandoned run. There we go. Whew. Whoops, we got conquered. The the campfire was too hot for us. It just burned us up. Um, but here we go with a new unlock, which unlocks Amber. It's a gem that accelerates for you. Accelerate again is reduce the turn counter of the rightmost stasis card by one. If the turn's counter is zero, return to your hand. It costs zero until played. Gem cannon is also here. Exhaust all gems in cards with gems in them in your hand. Deal 15 damage to a random enemy for each of the gems in those cards. And then Gem Binder. At the end of combat, you may choose a, rand uh, a common gem to add to your deck. I love Gem Binder. And then just trying to take a bunch of cards to socket them into. And then you can justify things like, you know, uh, the Gem Cannon. And then there's the other one that is... I can't remember its name. It's going to take me a while to actually remember the names of these things. Um, but it deals extra damage for each of the sockets, uh, each of the gem sockets that you filled in your deck. Oh! A new character! I have managed to stay entirely unspoiled for the Hexaghost. Obviously, I knew that the Hexaghost had to be coming at some point. Uh, there is a theme to the character mods that have been released previously by Michael Mayhem. Having... One sec. Play. Oh, standard and then down. Uh, having released the slime bound based off of the slime boss, the guardian based off of the guardian, and then you had to assume that there was going to be a hex ghost, right? The accursed, sorry, an accursed spirit of the spire, sealed to an eternal fate as a protector. The first time you ignite, which is a keyword, a ghost flame each turn, gain six block. Let's jump in. Arise, and we will confront the first intruder. Oh my god, yes, gotta love that. Oh my god, if this is a question mark that isn't a fight, we can get another elite. Baby? Let's look at the base stack. Something we'd missed. Okay, uh, strikes and defends, those upgrade naturally. Seer, one cost, apply nine soul burn. Soul burn. After three turns, a soul burnt enemy loses HP, removing the soul burn effect. So I'm assuming that they lose HP one for each point of soul burn would make the most sense here. Upgrades to 14 soul burn, uh, burn rather, sorry, and then float. Ethereal draw card advance. Advance. Activate the next ghost flame. If it's ignited, extinguish it. Activate. What, what's activate? That's a keyword as well. Okay, hang on. You may choose to retract or advance. Retract. 
activate the previous go flame if it's ignited extinguish it okay th this seems like it's going to make way more sense to me when we are in combat i may just take an upgrade on the float uh, let's take seer first actually well we're not going to have any time to learn anything here modified hand when we play a power card a random card in hand zero for the rest of the turn backtrack smack deals lemon damage and retracts also, uh, X cost Reign of Embers. Deal 5 damage and apply 5 Soul Burn to a random enemy X times. Upgrades to be X plus 1. And step through. Deal 6 damage. If the active Ghost Flame is ignited, advance. If not ignited. I'm going to take step through. I don't know what Ghost Flame is. I don't know what value it has. <gasps> oh my god, we just get Calibers and then run away. And then we go to here. And then we upgrade another card and step through. That doesn't really make sense. It's only 3, uh, three damage on the upgrade. Oh, yeah, we go for the, the float. And then... Secondly, nice. Pantograph at the start of boss combat, here for 25 HP, as well as Thermal Transfer. Deal seven damage if the enemy has Soul Burn, gain five lock, upgrades to eight. Uh, 10 and eight, rather. Fast forward, Ethereal, Force Ignite. Triggers the ignition effect described on Ghost Flame. On Ghost, I, nothing has described Ghost, it, it's gotta be in combat hovering over myself, right? This this doesn't describe ghost flame. Ghost flame's not a uh, not a keyword, so yeah, it's got to be something like that. Um, force ignite the active ghost flame, and then you advance, upgrade to no longer be ethereal. There's also haunted hand. Ethereal draw two cards. All cards in your hand become ethereal. <gasps> Okay, sounds like a way to burn my deck in play. I like it. Finally! Okay, okay, okay. Let's see what's going on here. Searing Ghost Flame. Active. Ignites when two attacks are played. Ignition. Hot and fresh out the kitchen when ignited. Apply four soul burn to a random enemy. At the end of your turn, if this is ignited, advance to the next Ghost Flame. Oh, okay, so hang on. All of these around me are the... Okay, so... It's the double attack direct. Oh, the double attack is the is the ignition condition for the... Oh, I love that. Uh, ignition condition. I'm going to be using that phrase the entire time. Enjoy. Um, the ignition condition for Searing Ghost Flame. This is the selected one, right? Yeah, okay. This is the selected one. And then Advance is probably clockwise. Retract is probably anti-clockwise. Oh, God, you may choose... You may choose to retract or advance. Does that mean I have the ability to choose to not do either? I'm just going to activate that one. So obviously, some effect is going to occur should I have the ability to activate all of them. This is inactive. Ignites when two skills are played while active. I wonder if a card that forces me to go to a different ghost flame would also... Ignites when spending three energy while active. That's interesting. That's easy. I should probably retract then. You do have the ability to do nothing. Interesting. Uh, Wait, hang on. What's step through do? Step through. If the active ghost flame is ignited, advance. If not ignited... So I can just activate the Inferno. When ignited, deal four damage to a random enemy for each ignited ghost flame, then extinguish them. Okay, so, oh, uh, okay, no, no. We want to advance, then step through. Right? And that just activated the next ghost flame. Okay. You're dealing 10 damage here. We probably just throw in a Seer, right? Actually, no. Seer isn't going to have enough turns because next turn you defend and then you peace out, right? So Seer doesn't have enough time. Uh, the condition on the current one is two attacks. Haunted Hand could help me get two attacks. And it does. The first time you ignite a Ghost Flame each turn, gain six block. Okay, okay. It's right, so meet those trigger conditions. That's that's what we're doing. We're we're a sequencing character. Oh, sequencing. 
I love a good sequencing character, but sometimes my brain is dumb. So I may make mistakes. Just going to give you that advanced warning. Uh, where it ignites when a power is played. We do not have the ability to ignite that. Ignites when too active. Okay, so... I mean, I could just ignite that already. There we go. And then ignites when spending three energy when active. You don't have the ability to spend three energy. Oh, no, wait, but we only get to... Yeah, we can only get to the next one, the Searing Ghost Flame. So let's draw a card. We'll advance. And then double attack there. We got everything except for the final in the Inferno there. And if we spend three energy this turn, that's fine, right? That'll do it. I mean, I could just ignite it right now. Step through. I'm, I'm not going to mess with the possibility that it screws up somehow. So uh, spend the energy and then... That's 100 damage to the merchant. That is not bad. Ooh, okay. Bunch of new stuff. First off, membership card. 50% discount on all... Pro not modded content? What do you mean not modded content? Oh, right. Okay, so it looks different because previously it looked in the theme of the shop. And it can't look as it's yeah, as though it's in the theme of the shop here. Uh, got it. That makes sense. Because this isn't the shop shop, you know? Uh, Rain of Embers. We've seen it before. Fire starter. Deal five damage. Apply five soul burn. Upgrade to 7 to 7. Ghost shield. Ethereal. Gain six block. If your hand contains another ethereal card, gain six block. Upgrade to 8 and 8. That's quite powerful. Ethereal gain 12 block. If this card is exhausted, add a shadow guys into your hand. So next turn you get the 12 block as well. Upgrade speed, just 16. The Shadow Guys is 16 as well. Empowered Flame, Intensity, increases the damage of Soul Burn and block applied by Ghost Flames when ignited. I'm, I'm definitely going to be taking the Empowered Flame here. There's also Time Ripple. Boss Time Eater, deal 8 damage and apply slow to all enemies. Exhaust, upgrades to 24. Yeah, very happy to take the Empowered Flame and just bounce. All right. Yeah, Ooze Infused Drink, we've seen that before. Four random zero costs. Two more upgrades there. We can even go for... I mean, we don't have the choice. We have to go down this direction anyway. Uh, point of dex. Yeah, point of dex matters more. Obviously, get the empowered flame upgrade. Question mark with... Ooh, I love it. Hopefully, we get some energy here. So, strike, strike. And then advance. But I advance at the end of the turn anyway. So I could step through. And that would just complete my thing already. Let's haunt it hand first and see what we can do. Okay. Okay. This makes more sense now. So I can strike, strike. And then I can float. And then I can step through. Right? So strike, strike. We'll float to advance. And then we step through. We can take six damage, but we got two of them ignited. Unfortunately, I don't have another attack to play here. Oh, it goes over turns. Yeah, ignites when two attacks are played, not two attacks in the same turn. Interesting. I'm assuming, yeah, that kills. So the, the indication of the soul burn on the character means that the soul burn is going to kill. Uh, let's step through. Strike him. Let's float to advance. I don't really know what I'm doing at the end here. 
I'm just trying to wrap up the fight. There we go. Obviously pick up the odd mushroom, which is... Uh, sorry, I, I missed a couple of these. My bad. Uh, Calipers, at the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of it. Hand grab at the start of boss combat, heal for 25 HP, as well as the odd mushroom. When vulnerable, take 25% more attack damage rather than 50% more attack. If the active ghost flame is not ignited, gain an energy. No, I'm, I'm going to be igniting them consistently. That's kind of my whole dealio right now. I don't think I want to take any of those. Don't want to ooh shiny my way through this again. In breaking that sapphire, I've decided that my path is not going to be to the shop here. Ooh, should I recall that? Strength matters a little bit for us. Haunted hand upgrade still matters a lot, though. Extra card. Okay, let's haunt that hand. One, two, uh, uh, uh. Take three damage here. So when ignited, deals seven damage to random enemy twice. Ignites when two skills are played. Or ignites right now. Rewind, retract, gain an energy, and draw a card. We're not going to want to retract, though. I think I am actually just going to want to consistently try and go the whole loop. Two attacks is really easy to meet, and then I can float, and then I can step through in order to meet the next one as well. So... Wow, two attacks is usually really easy to meet. Yikes. Okay, we'll uh, step through there and then float for an advance. Open a fend and a seer and actually, yeah, trigger the impact. This is a lot more intuitive than it might currently look like. Like, I am currently feeling like I know what I'm doing already with it. Uh, a lot of the time when I play a modded character... One of, the, one of the big things that I I have found can turn me off to a modded character is there being, like, really cool ideas in it, but there are so many really cool ideas in it that they all overcrowd one another, and then you can't really do anything, and also it's really, really unintuitive how to play the character and how to understand their mechanics. This, and... All of Michael Mayhem's mods, by the way, like it's one of the reasons that I consistently play his character mods because they are so well designed. This is already feeling like second nature to me. I mentioned this in my Discord earlier. By the way, there's a Discord link in the description down below if you want to possibly uh, hang out. It's a good time. Uh, I, I mentioned in my Discord earlier that uh, it is all I can do to not just turn on this video and squeal about how much I like this mod for 80 minutes and then just call that. It's, it's all of my... It's all of my action going into that. Uh, stoke the fire. Gain five block for each ignited ghost flame. Upgrade a random card in your hand. Uh, I don't really think I need that. Nightmare strike. Uh, it's the same version as the, the other one, the defensive one. Still don't necessarily want that. Pass. Gosh, we don't have any damage in the deck. Why am I doing this? It's still going to be fine. It's still going to be fine, isn't it? Yeah, it's still going to be fine. Okay. Step through an attack. Empowered flame. Float to get to the next... So if I went to the very back, it would be when I spend three, I deal seven damage for each ignited ghost flame and then extinguish them. Interesting. Just trying to figure out the circumstances in which I would want to retract there, and that's just when I want to do instantaneous damage, I guess. Or have some other impact that I'm trying to achieve. 
You know what this kind of reminds me of? The the sequencing of things here? It kind of reminds me of... Oh, God, what was the name of the relic? It was from the Conspire mod. Uh, which was uh, Tuan, Tuan Viel. Um, oh, God. It was like puzzle box or mystery box of... Uh, I can't remember entirely, but... Oh, decoder ring. It was decoder ring. Thank you. There was a random neuron that was like, I know this one, and just ran to the center of the brain to tell me it was decoder ring. And uh, you had to play attacks and skills in a sequence in order, like three attacks, two skills, one attack, two skills, three attacks, yeah, something. It, not exactly those numbers, right? But you had to play them in a certain uh, order in order to trigger a massive impact effect. Kind of getting a little bit of a feeling like that, and that is a good feeling to have. Uh, step through just to move to the next one so that if I play a two attack here never mind I'll just kill instant inferno retain ignite the inferno ghost flame and upgrades to ign okay yeah that's extremely what we're going for here it's very much towards the build that we're already kind of trying to play uh, let's double strike the backliner and then float and then defend I think Float to advance. And yeah, okay, so the float doesn't count itself in the crushing ghost flame. Good. Well, I mean, not good, but it's what I expected. So you can see, just in case the, the UI is not necessarily like immediately apparent to you, the, the top two are the, the ignition condition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Then we also have all of the different ghost flames. I'm going to quote that so many times. Are we going to have all the different ghost flames around here? And then next to them shows the impact. Should I manage to ignite them? Uh, Obviously, like, haunted hand. And it instantly ignites that one. Let's step through. Get empowered to fans. Uh. This instant inferno. I was really hoping I'd get two hits on the frontliner in order to get down and save myself some HP there. I think a risk of this character is the idea that you might burn out your entire deck before you do anything useful. I don't think that's super unlikely. That that happens to us, that is. Oh, okay, okay. I just learned something very important, which is the soul, uh, soul burn, a newly applied soul burn does not create its own counter. Instead, it adds to the current counter. So if you soul burn someone and then two turns later, you soul burn them again, the turn afterwards, they will take all of the damage from all of the soul burn rather than taking the damage from the first soul burn that next turn and then two turns after that, again, taking the, uh, the soul burn that you applied. That is hugely important. That is going to change a lot about the way that I play here. Ethereal, gain two decks, lose one strength, upgrade to three and one. Interesting. Very interesting. So the idea, I mean, obviously we have a Calipus, so it's like a really good idea. I should probably just take it. I'm going to take it. The idea behind that is like play a defensive deck and then just trigger all of these and then use that. Is that it? Because I like it. I like that idea. Uh, let's... Double strike the frontliner, and then we will float forwards. Oh, you're going to give me a step through, really? Dang. Sucks to miss out on playing the step through. Okay, I'm going to hand for the draw. No, I don't have the ability to advance at all, do I? No. Let's make the impact a little bit more spicy. Pop the instant inferno. And then take out the frontliner. Perfect. Speed running, whenever you advance, gain two block. It is another power. I don't I don't want to just overstack powers that I don't necessarily want. Uh the haunting echo deals eight. If the active ghost flame is ignited, 
ignited, uh, ignited, sorry, uh, force ignited. Force ignited is trigger the ignition flame, even if it's already ignited. I like that. I may take that. And then living bomb, apply five soul burn. The next time the target soul burn detonates, it affects all enemies. This is, this is good for like a heavy soul burn build. We don't necessarily run that. Okay, the boss here has Vajra. Also, Arcalcum, the Serpent. You have a Doubt Curse, which was used to buy a Relic. Okay, cool. Hmm. A random card costs zero to the rest of the turn. So we don't want Instant Inferno to be affected by this because we're not going to play that this turn. So then we Phantom Cloak and Draw. So here it's double strike defend. Interesting. So this has ethereal. It was granted ethereal by my uh, by my haunted hand. However, retain is overriding ethereal here. I like that. Otherwise, I would have been like really worried about putting any retain cards in this deck. I, I wasn't even thinking about the possibility of that being in case. Um, so. I wonder. I, I need to do this for Matt, uh, for Matt, for science. I'm going to defend, and then I'm going to float, and I'm going to see if that's going to activate this before I have the ability to advance. It does! Oh, that's so good! Then I get to step through, and then I get to uh, Haunting Echo, so I have the ability to add more Soul Burn two times over. You're like a kid in a candy store right now. Uh, Haunting Echo again? No, 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 uh, 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 ignites when a power is played. We don't have the ability to do that. Uh, we also don't have anything in the hand that just ignites for us. As much as I want to throw the soul burn out for 14 more damage, I think it's probably just defend, defend, defend. Play safe. It's not like the boss is really scaling up at all. Uh, okay, let's use step through. Double strike, I guess. Next up is Trigging Condition of two attacks. Okay. Float for the advance. I mean, I, there's no good reason not to, right? Advance. And defend. I don't need to use the, the Instant Inferno here. I can just use two more pieces of energy and we're fine. Hmm. What do I do here? Ignite the info. So I could ignite it right now, and then it's ignited, and then as it's ignited, it ignites everything else, goes for the damage, which is nice. Is that what I want? And then I'd step through to move to the next one, and then just play another attack, I guess. Okay, so it does... So for each ignited ghost flame and then ignite it, if it's active advance. So if somehow you set it to be active without igniting it, then you can advance past. Okay, that makes that makes a little bit more sense to me. Uh, then I'm going to use... Step through, igniting this, and then I'm also going to use Haunting Echo to just do the ignite effect again, just adding more soul burn onto the target. Skill, float, gets us to the next. We advance again. Then use step through to again finish up a... Uh, finish up another ghost flame. And here I'm happy to go for the damage. Okay. Step through. And then haunting... What? When ignited, gain... 
Also, I did I did gain the two strength, right? It's, it, it has seven next to the number on the top, and I was like, I don't have seven decks, especially because that is the symbol. Is that the symbol for decks, or is that? Oh, the symbol for decks and the symbol for block look very similar. It's literally just the coloration, uh, as well as Dex is split down the middle, and uh, and this one has kind of like a, a four point perspective to it. Yeah, so just throw out that. No good reason not to that I can see. We attack. Then let's float and advance. And then I can very happily sit, defend, and then defend next turn for the kill. Actually, do we want to do that? Is there any reason to do something over the next turn? Yeah, I'm just going to spend the energy and... If nothing else, just because it's a new mechanic and I want to utilize it. Interesting. Let's have a look at these in a sec. Sorry, just got to clear my throat. All right, sorry about that. Uh, turn it up. Gain five intensity, lose it in X plus one turns, upgrades to X plus two. So the more you cast this for, the more turns you get to keep the intensity for. As long as you're not losing more than the intensity that you actually put into this, I'm very happy to take that. Paranormal form is also here. Whenever you play an ethereal card, deals seven damage to a random enemy, upgrades from five. I'm not sure if I've seen enough support for an ethereal build to do that moment uh, at the moment. Uh, but I mean, the haunted hand is definitely part. It's it's definitely just turn it up for this. I don't want to see fewer cards because I am playing a new character and I just want to see more cards. I also want to be able to upgrade those cards, so I'm just taking the cursed key. Um, probably would have taken the cursed key anyway out of those three. Maybe I would have gone for the hammer. Sorry again. Uh, yeah, maybe I would have gone for the hammer. Hmm. We can't get over to that Emerald Elite if we start with this path here, but that is some very, very condensed card upgrade. I like some good condensed card upgrade. The extra turn on turn it up. It seems like it's going to matter a lot to us. Strike, strike, haunting echo is a lot of damage here. I actually think I'm going to use the blessing of the forge here. Just get some good upgrades. They're not good upgrades. Sorry, they're not good upgrades, but they they are upgrades, which makes them good enough. Hang on. Um, deal eleven. I wonder if the haunting echo is going to work. Like if I strike then haunting echo. If this doesn't work, I might reload the fight, but I, I just want to want to see. It did the effect two times. Okay, it does work. Neat. But it doesn't show an orange border. So you have to be careful. Because it's just checking if it's currently ignited rather than whether it will ignite. Uh, Then defend, defend, I feel. Make it clean. Phantom Cloak, defend, and then turn it up as much as we can. Which also actually... Hey, hey did that increase the damage that we were doing? So it, it should have, it should have, if, if the ordering is working. Uh, as I was already seeing it too. Okay, hang on. Step through, then we can float forward, and then we can play a power. Like that. Step through. Float forwards. Play power. Okay, and then we can't step through again. Instant Inferno is looking pretty good right now, though. Have a look at our other options. Oh my god, we have the ability to float through. 
Let's advance and two attacks. Can we do that? Mm, we can get one. Back line is down. And yeah, I'm not going to finish it up. Just because the back line was already going to die and I don't want the instant inferno to put so much damage out on a target that may already just die. So 12 by 6 is 70. That's not necessarily lethal. I mean, in fact, it's just not lethal. Um, but I do want to see it do. Nice. The theming of this match is that... I'm trying not to have the just 80 minutes of... Ah, it's so good. Um, oh, what's this? Afterlife. Afterlife. If this card is exhausted, activate its effects. Huh. I like that. Activate its effects. Not play it. Activate its effects. That. That's that's a very important difference there. Uh, but just extra block on top of the, the calibers just does seem actually quite nice. Uh, re -ign sorry, ignite the active ghost flame and then ignite. Okay, that, that makes it significantly more useful. Okay, now we can actually read the text on this one. The Joust. As you make your way through the large buildings, you come across a long, narrow bridge and spot knights on the other side, facing one another. You approach and they scatter, glaring at one another. Monster! You fight it! If you're so good at killing things! No! You fight it! You know monsters bear what with that demonic cat! They won't stop bickering. You'll have to decide. What is the demonic cat a reference to? Demonic cat. Is that a Puella Magi Madoka Madoka? I said the name of that wrong. Well, imagine Madoki Magica? Madoka Magica? I watched like three episodes of it. I, I stopped before it became good. Apparently, I need to go back and watch it. Anyway, that's, that's a whole different issue. Uh, 70 lives are just... Uh, yeah, I don't want to risk too much HP, right? Yeah. Wait, hang on. Uh, you loom over the night, and rather than even trying to run, he simply cowers. You slay him easily and take his souls. And then when you turn for the other night, he's already ran away. Boy, you gotta love the ability to turn it up on turn one, don't you? Don't you? Do you? Do we? Defend, defend, turn it up. Okay, got it. Strike, strike, float forwards. Then, haunted hands. That one and that's after two attacks. Okay, so defend. I don't need to step through, just go to the next one. Although I guess I can. Okay. So let's strike, then haunting echo, applying a ridiculous amount of soul burn. And then I could instant. What do I think I'm gonna do? I like this a lot. If the active ghost flame is not no, uh uh, uh, I mean we 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 go to new ghost flames a lot of the time. So is that not good? One energy, fourteen block, conditional, but it's conditional because we 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 advance the next ghost flame consistently. But step through is good. Like, step through is just straight up good. It solves problems instantaneously. Haunting Echo is also good. Actually, having the ability to affect another Ignite of the thing that we currently have, because we have the pump it up, the turn it up, seems very useful. Am I having difficulty igniting? In the second cycle, sometimes I have difficulty igniting. Does that mean I take step through? I think it does, actually. Hmm. 
Well, let's at least get an upgrade here. Ooh, this enemy could be pretty bad. Uh, okay, let's... We strike, then we Haunting Echo. Okay. Then let's float forwards. We can impart Flame. What about a Seer and another Strike? One skill from the next. At the very least, the enemy wasn't attacking that turn, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be much, that, uh, much better this turn. All right, let's defend. Step through in order to get to the next one. Then I think it's just going to be... Defend, turn it up. So we got two turns of the extra intensity right now. So activate the current one, giving some... Oh, actually, that'll be totally fine, right? It gives 12 soul flame, and then it kills. Even if it didn't kill, like, it, it would have left enough soul flame for the target to die. There's a hexagon and paranormal form. There's also bright ritual. Gain one, uh, gain an energy and draw one for each ignited ghost flame, then extinguish them. Exhaust. I think this is about, like using your current ghost flames just to like not to trigger their effects but in order to <sighs> what i'm trying to say is this is fission right you're not trying to get the maximum impact out of your orbs with fission this, this is a parallel obviously i'm not saying they're exact same cards cards in different characters mean different things like nine block on one character doesn't mean the same as nine block on another character they're not directly comparable but i'm using it to say that you are not using this specifically to get the best effect out of your ghost flames you are using it to translate that into energy and card draw so that you can support the rest of your deck that's not what this deck does hexagon still looks like it could be pretty good good pretty good good, good. maybe my last hex mine. New curse, aged, yeah, ethereal, unplayable. The end of turn at a void status of trouble. Uh, we need to get rid of that. It's extremely bad for us. I do want to get my my gem right now, don't I? I do. Having another point of strength seems pretty good for us. Wish I could play Turn It Up before the double strike. Okay. Uh, we... Do I care about being weakened next turn? No, but I do care about getting a little bit of a free heal because I don't want to turn down... Uh, one sec. Yeah, I'm just going to turn it up, I think. I do care about getting a free heal because I don't want to have to turn down a potion at the very end and not benefit. Um, but also, I care about taking a jump off the field. But the enemy was attacking. Should I have cared about taking a jump off the field? Actually, probably not in that case, right? Um, let's... Haunted Hand. Float. We'll advance to the next one. Then we can use... Strike and step through to advance to the next one. And then we can step through. My gosh. Sequencing is so fun here. Uh, then we can step through and then we can get to this, which is ignited, uh, gain 12 block and one strength. And then we can do that again to get another point of strength. Phantom. Yeah, I'm still happy to do that. Although I probably should have struck first, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Right, just defense, defense. Is this worth? Actually, it is, isn't it? Because of that. Come on, lethal. Got him. Question card, the ability to look at another card. Unfortunately, it doesn't trigger for this. Nightmare guys, ethereal, gain 16. If the card is exhausted, I shadow guys. There are too many cards that I draw right now that I don't actually get an instantaneous effect out of. Ethereal, uh, force ignite the active, ghost flame, advance. Fast forward's looking a lot better right now. 
Force Ignite. It triggers its effect even if it's already ignited. I need ways to move forward. Yeah, fast forward totally fits. Let's break the ruby, gaining a strength. The only important upgrade there is Phantom Cloak. We actually kind of... I don't... We kind of over-upgraded? I was about to say, I don't, I don't even want to say this, but we are a little. Oh, Merchant. And then we get another Merchant down here, baby. That is my bag, baby. Uh, hit him with a... Hit him with the rhythm and give him a stigmatism. It's a float. Eh, it's just float by. I don't think we're even going to have the possibility of doing anything that one. Okay. We advance. Gosh. Bad opening hand. Just not good. Just tough stuff. Okay. Let's... Strike and then step through, putting us, uh, igniting that and then moving us to the next one. Cool. And then we can step through, igniting this, getting us some more defense. Get thorns. Turn it up would be really good, but I only have to cast it at the very end this turn. I don't actually need to cast it that badly. Uh, force ignite. Then I move. You disappear next turn, so yeah, Soul Burn still doesn't do anything here. I don't want to advance past this without actually meeting its impact. That, that's, that was probably wrong, right? That feels like that one was wrong. Okay, it's Haunted Hand. Ghost Flame doesn't matter at all. Okay, fine. We'll strike, putting more of that effect on you, despite the fact that it doesn't matter. Then let's use float to advance. Then we can step through. Dealing a giant amount of damage. And then... Uh, strike Haunting Echo isn't really going to do that much either. I mean, it's, it's just... It's just... Strike and then Instant Inferno for as much extra damage as I could do there. Wait, you are taking that Soul Burn damage this turn. Oh my god, yeah, I could have... I could have done more. That's fine, we'll have another opportunity in a moment. Is this going to be a second floor kill of the Merchant? And I don't have that many more cards in the deck that I need to upgrade, so I have the ability to use the rest side to do that. Uh, there's also Unleashed Spirits. Deal five damage to a random enemy. Repeat for each ethereal card in your exhaust pile. Thermal Transfer. Deal seven. We've seen that before. We've seen Ghost Shield before. Burning Touch. We've seen before, have we? If the enemy has Soul Burn, apply seven Soul Burn. And then after that, apply Soul Burn. Uh, another Paranormal Form. Still not going to play it here. Face Slap. Remove all block deal towards damage. Apply to Vulnerable. Nah. Uh, I mean, Master of Strategy is incredible here, but it's, it's got to be gear. So good. Do I got question marks? No. Gun down the merchants. We already had a good plan. Let's just execute it. Strike. Move forwards. Then... That one I just have to step through. Float to advance. And sure. Strike. And closer again to the next trigger. Alright. Strike you. 
So I'm just going to have to Phantom and then defend. And do I defend again? The Hexa? I think I do. Uh oh. That's a lot of defense going on that turn. Yeah, and we're not going to have a power plate, so we're not going to have the ability to Haunting Echo. Actually. Oh! Still no power plate. <laughs> uh. Maybe I just hard full defend here. It's not great, but it's okay. Powered Flame activates that. Then I can use a step through to get to the second. Strike you for the kill. Defend and then turn it up. And then next turn, we're going to instant Inferno. Yep. <laughs> Haunted Hand again. I play the cards that are important to me, right? Uh, Reign of Embers we've seen before, Sword of Night we've seen before, and then Phantom Fireball. Deal 8 damage if the enemy has Soul Burn, detonate it. I'm taking another pre-upgraded Haunted Hand. <sighs> Question marks! They're so good, though! Remove all strikes, grain, three upgraded tackles. So, I'm, I'm very happy to do this. It's three damage to myself as well, but we're doubling the damage of these strikes, and we're removing one from the deck. Ah, uh, this is exactly the kind of thing I was hoping for, but um, also I am now looking at my health points and I'm a little nervous. As you continue down the spire, you notice a group of humanoids waiting in ambush nearby a large auditorium. When approached, the slavers are startled but quickly explain themselves. We await those who would assault our city, the ones you seek to destroy. We have a audience waiting a fresh capture, the people you love, uh, the people love a fight to the death. Now I've done Captive Hero before, so... I guess I go for the Arena Champions. You enter the massive stadium to find an overflowing audience of slavers and cultists and other denizens of the city. Bring me your best. You boom into the crowd, opening a challenge to their true champions. The two challenges approach, warning you that the rules of Arena prevent them from holding back despite your position as a Lord of the Spy. You would assume nothing less. Oh, it's a typical fight. Got it. Uh, okay. I think I actually just float. Yeah. Let's float to advance. And then we throw out a defend and a turn it up. We shouldn't be in the fight for long enough for that to be right, right? So it should be like double defend tackle. Turn it up. Heck, is it Seer then turn it up as well? Yep. If we're in this fight for too long, we've already lost it. Is the is the compelling reason behind this for me. Ugh, Agent. Why does that have to be that? Okay, um. My Phantom Cloak can start popping out some hexagons. I still haven't really got attacks in this head. I'm going to step through. Use that as the way that I trigger both of those attacks. So I'm going to tackle, step through. And then I'm going to instant Inferno. Wow! Did not manage to kill that frontliner. I wanted to get the instant Inferno off before we lost all of the rest of our intensity. Just play a power. Easy. And use a step through just to get to the next one. Uh, yeah, I can force ignite that. And heck, I can even defend. The more energy I spend, the better off we are here, so. 
Haunted. Hexa. Step through. I mean, that'll just move me to the next one. Sure. Good kill. Toxic Egg, as well as the Incense Burner. Every six turns gain an intangible, as well as whenever you add a skill card to your deck, upgrade it. 100 souls and some new cards. Gain eight block. We've seen that one before. Skip a beat. Advance. Force Ignite the next Ghost Flame. Nah, I don't skip beats. Backtrack Smack. Again, don't really want that. Ghost Lash. Ethereal. Deal seven damage if it contains another. Okay, so we've, we've seen the kind of like parallel to this in defense. Still don't want any of those. Thanks for the offers, though. Hmm. Have to start out with the, floated, uh, the Haunted Hand here. Didn't get a second attack. That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. I actually probably need to use the Ancient Potion here as well to prevent the Snekos. Confuse. Yeah. Right, I'm a... Wait. Wait. Hang on. Force Ignite triggers the ignition effect that so wait it triggers the ignition effect but it also ignites it i thought it just triggered the effect without igniting it which was why i was avoiding using it prior uh oh, my bad uh okay here it is defend and then we float and then we'll be able to move forward again okay and just throw out a tackle Final thing is the ancient potion. Prevent that gaze. Because we have a lot of zero cost in this deck and they matter. Okay. Let's go tackle first, I guess. No reason to do it first. Especially because now we can step through and then empowered flame. Let's sear and then turn it up, I think, to finish out. Okay. I'm going to step through just completing this. Haunting Echo. Tackle and then... Into the Inferno, which is way too much damage. Searing Wound, all enemies lose HP equal to their Soul Burn. There's also Thermal Transfer. Here and now, at the start of each turn, gain two strength. Lose this strength whenever you would... Uh, dang it. <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, Spectre's Whale. Ethereal Afterlife, deal eight damage to all enemies. Upgrade Soul Burn. Still fine without any of those. You have a Aldi Smooth Stone as well as ooh, two extra energy. Oh, no, sorry. You start combat in Calm, rather, which is important because you got Life Water coming out. Boss duplicated a powerful card and Art of War for an additional energy on turns you don't attack. And you got a Ritual Dagger. Okay, we, it's going to matter how big that Ritual Dagger is. And then I defend and throw that. At least we're getting rid of Aged really early here. Double defend this turn. Neat. Uh, you, you may not. All oh, right, you can't play the Ragnarok this turn, right? That's not in the next turn. Again, I forgot that that's not how next turn do. Uh, Hexagod here, I think. Haunted Hand goes through. Ooh, interesting. Let's use Float to advance. And then I could fast forward and then step through. Let's fast forward to get to the next. Step through to complete that one as well. And then turn it up. We're not getting many turns effectiveness out of that turn it up right now, but hopefully we don't need all of them. Wave the hand and then reach heaven. Nice, we're intangible this turn, so we can pretty much do what we want. 
Obviously, Empowered Flame has to go out. No questions about that one. I'm going to Hexer, hoping to draw an attack. So I tackle first, just in case I then draw that tackle. See you at the very ends. Ow. Enemy managed to weaken me there. You're going to want as much defense as I can possibly generate. Start out with the Hexagard. You're not making it easy on me, game, are you? Do we just use a step through or ignite and then move? Let's just ignite and then move. That moved me two times. Right? Hang on. Fast forward. Force ignite the active ghost flame. Advance. So this was active. It got force ignited. When ignited, deals seven damage to all enemies and zealous them. If it's active, advance. But it wasn't because it extinguished itself. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe it does advance past itself already. Interesting. That matters a little bit just because now I want to, like, step through and then to Gecko to do it again. And that's not getting Soul Burn, which otherwise would have... Uh, this one's probably just double attack. Defense here, double attack. I mean, I can advance. Probably should. Oh, nice. Especially if we get a Hexagard. Uh, and it doesn't matter if I do nothing or advance here. Because if I do nothing, I go to the next one next turn because of that. All right. Hang on. Have I misunderstood how you advance? Do you not advance if you are on an ignited soul flame? No, you need other things to help. Okay. I, I have misunderstood something fierce here, and I need to figure out what it is. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep an eye on a couple actions here. It's 20 damage ritual dagger. It's, it's fine, I guess. Uh, We don't have a power in hand, so we have to use a step through in order to activate this. And then Haunting Echo is a perfect companion piece. Float and advance. So yeah, there's there's no reason that would advance at the end of the next turn that, that I can see. Wait, hang on. At the end of your turn, if this is ignited, advance. So it's on here that it says that. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, never mind. I was initially right. I hadn't just hugely misread it. Um, This should probably just be tackle. Tackle. And then... Actually, I'm going to float ahead. And then Instant Inferno. Because then all of them are lit. Nice. Pop a tackle for the finisher. Another Instant Inferno does look pretty good. But what else do we have? Fifth seal. Ethereal seal. A seal can't be upgraded. If all six seals have been played this combat, obtain the broken seal and remove the seals from your deck. At the end of combat, upgrade a random card in your deck. Eh, how many cards in our deck really need upgrades? Also, it doesn't care. Hexagard doesn't really care. It's, like, the effects of these are just increased by three. Increased by three. So I really don't care about those three increase. Yeah. I don't really care about the fifth seal. It is nice. It would be really powerful. Do I need it? No. How am I going to get six of them? I don't know. Instant Inferno is just obviously good here still. 
Whenever an attack deals unblocked attack damage, you apply three salt. That's really powerful as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the the instant inferno. Okay. Extra energy matters a lot, and I also need the extra ability to rest next floor. I think I'm gonna take the Sozu. Now that we have the extra energy, we should start looking a little bit more heavily at some of the cards that cost a bit more. Previously, they were kind of easy turn downs, but not so much at this point. Good. We have a path that can get the... Can get that and then can break it afterwards. Perfect. Okay. I don't get that many lifts opportunities, unfortunately. Oh, I could have turned over there and just got an extra strength. Start battle with an extra strength. Okay. It's like tackle step through. I mean, empowered flame first. Tackle step through, and then hopefully. Float, and that draws not a skill, unfortunately. So I'm going to retract to go to the previous one. What happened? Retract. If it's ignited, extinct. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that if you went to one that's ignited, you extinguish it with the... Ugh. Whoops. I was just trying to trigger the, the effect here again. Um, okay. Can we do the same thing? Then go for a Haunted Hand, and we're just about to lose a bunch of defense. Do I want to play the extra Haunted Hand? I don't know if I want to. Five full turns. Okay. We're looking for an attack, and we found it. Tackle, tackle. I mean, I may as well throw a Seer on there, right? Phantom Cloak easily. Now we can Hex it for the draw as well, just in case. And then Float to advance. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, what do I do now? What do I do now? Um, let's fast forward. I'm going to defend, I'm going to Seer, and then I'm going to Haunting. Nice. Alright. Crushing wants two skills played. Obviously, Hexagon's going to be one of them. And we don't have another. So instead, I'm going to step through, and then I'm going to step through again, and then I'm going to use Tackle, and I'm going to Tackle again. Just trying to set up for instant Inferno turns. Let's go step through, and then float past. And no, I'm going to do nothing here and actually stay on that for the extra block and the extra strength. Instant Inferno should be the start of the next turn. Let's Seer and then Tackle. Right? Yeah, Instant Inferno right now is just... Big damage. Tackle, step through. Obviously could have started going more Infernos after that if I wanted as well. Hex level. At the start of your turn, gain in intensity. Upgrades to be innate. That's huge. We spent a long time in those fights. It's it's monumental. This is very impressive. Need it. Need it. Love it. Want it. Got it. Uh, tackle Haunting Echo. Let's Haunted Hand first, just in case we see something significantly better. We don't. Tackle and Haunting Echo. Just going to Hex a level out there as well. Nice. Here... Uh... Forcing Night the Active. That's that's okay. We're Forcing Night the Active again, and then we also have the ability to Seer. All 
All right. It's Phantom Cloak and then Hexagod for the cast that we needed. Got a Haunted Hand too. Oof, it didn't necessarily work as well as I wanted. Okay, we'll advance with that. Single tackle. We, we are lacking, apparently, attacks from this deck. That is one thing that we're having a lot of trouble with consistently. So both of those are attacking this turn. I could happily just instant Inferno. And in fact, it looks like I definitely should. Okay. Then you want another power, but I am going to just deal another 28 to you. Seen all of these before, and we've decided we don't want them all before. Simplifies my decision making here. Hello, merchant. Oh, that's a double tackle turn it up opening hand right there. Let's ignite the active. I mean, we don't need this to be available for more than four turns, right? Hang on. You defend, you attack, you buff, you leave. Four turns, right? So, boss forwards and then. So let's float, which we'll also use to advance. Don't have two attacks in hand, unfortunately. It does feel like maybe Instant Inferno wants to go out now, but roll through, push through the, the through one. If we get that hit, step through. There we go. That's good. Step through gets us the next trigger and then step through gets us the next trigger as well. Pop a seer on there. It's an inferno. For almost lethal. And then let's turn that almost lethal into Mmm, delectable souls. Uh, strike dummy. That would have upgraded my... If they were upgraded strikes themselves into tackles. So, whoops. Donus power gain one strength and one artifact. Add a random car, uh, attack to your hand. It costs zero this turn. <laughs> oh, this is, uh, so th this is like ancient attack, but uh, available for all classes. Force ignite the previous ghost. Uh, it's decent. Okay, hang on. Let's just go across. Time warp. Deal four damage whenever you advance or retract. Return this from the discard pile to your hand. From the discard pile to your hand. How often is it going to be in the discard pile? Constantly. Every time I draw it. That's, that's good damage. There's deal 20 damage. Damage increased by the enemy soul burn. Upgrades to 30. Catch up. Has the ability to force ignite the previous. Hex Hexagod, which we already have. Radiant Flame. Uh, whenever you ignite a ghost flame, deal three, uh, sorry, apply three soul burn to a random enemy, upgrades to five. Do I care about cards exhausting? Uh, not so much. So I don't really care about the strange spoon there. Matroshka, we only really have one opportunity to open that. So that's just like buying a random relic. Um, let's do the obvious thing and remove aged. It's two dead draws in deck. It's very significantly slowing us down. Donnie's power actually feels very takeable for us here. So take that. Winding Halls. Hunt down the merchant. I mean, I've already hunted down the merchant. Search the treasury for a relic or explore an event. I think I did explore an event last time, so... But I have so much money. Why wouldn't I not go for the merchant? Start each elite combat with two strength. There's one, and then there's an elite next floor, which is the the fight itself. Uh, we could just take another step through and another fast forward. 
and another time warp. Oh my god. Hmm. Extra crispy cards and ghost flames apply two more soul burn on the upgrade. There's also a uh, defensive mode, boss guardian, yeah, game 12, game 20, into defensive mode. Got it. Okay. No, I'm fine. Uh, I do have to go left if I want to be able to get the. Okay, let's fast forward. Okay. And then if I defend before I fast forward, I can trigger that again. So defend, fast forward, and then it'll trigger two times. You can hex a level and round it out with a tackle. Haunted Hand hopefully gets us pretty quickly to those zero costs that return themselves from the, dis uh, the discard pile. Uh, we don't have the ability to advance here at all, do we? Okay, let's use a Hexaguard. Uh, we should Phantom Cloak before we use the Hexaguard. Then Empowered Flame, then Attack Defends. Attack. Instant Inferno. Let's go for the kill. Heat Crush Spect as well, Radiant Flame, and Nightmare Guys. This is now no cost for us to take. We also have five energy each turn. I'm going to take a Nightmare Guys just for a little bit more defense. Not having a curse probably matters more to me right now. Oh, removed it. Uh, wait, never mind. Hang on, Bonfire spe the Spirits are different, obviously. Uh, the Spirits saw small bones and fragments into the fire, which brilliantly erupt each time. As you approach, the spirits will turn to you expectantly. Receive a reward based on the offer. If I gave a blue, I get a full heal, right? I don't know if that's necessarily going to hold. Uh, let's throw a defend. Uh, the spirits seem to be ignoring you now, disappointing. Yeah, that's a basic card. Of course, it was going to give me nothing. I need one gold from this fight. Gosh, I hope I get it. Haunted hands. Okay. Let's... Defend, tackle, tackle. Phantom. Right, well, we didn't get the ability to play the Hexa level here as well. It's fine. Uh, overblocked by that much? Really? Nah. We want more block for the next turn because the Raptor Mance is going to change to attacking here. There we see. So I could like shadow guys don't lose power, trigger that, and then like. No, I don't like that. God, I don't really like any turn here. One thing is obviously time warp goes out first, right? No, but I'm not advancing or attracting. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. Don't lose power. What do you get? Heat crush. That's the ability to kill a target by itself. It's good enough. Then Shadow Guys trees the effect on the card. The next one is attacks. So attack you with that. Then I'm gonna step through, getting that attack back. Use it again against you. Then use Heat Crush here, getting another ignition. And then I can haunting echo for the same ignition again. Let's time warp. Still got one power left in the deck that I might draw. That's not it. 
That's also not it. So fine, I'll do nothing and stay here. Then use the step through to gain the extra block on that turn. Seer, tackle, turn it up. Purely just trying to end up with a much more significant instant Inferno. And that'll do it. Not kill, but it's a significant instant Inferno. Back to the attacks. We'll go Haunted Hand, looking for an attack. We do not find one. Alright, so I'll fast forward. Time Warp. Then fast forward. Time Warp. Time Warp. Let's... I mean... Instant Inferno as well? So good. So power. Such big... Uh... Volcano Visage. Start of your turn, apply five soul burn to all it. Oh, that's so good. Uh, but I gotta take another turn it up. Especially for the boss fight at the very end. It's meow. Break that. If I want to get to my full potential, I need to lift. No days off. Start out with Haunted Hand, looking for another attack. Good, we found it. So now we tackle, taking the three, using step through to go to the next. Phantom Cloak. The nightmares, guys, and then float again to get to the next. And just Hexa. Double tackle Donu's power and then turn it up seems pretty uh pretty above board here for us. Phantom, if it has soul burn, detonate it. That doesn't matter that much. Thank you, time warp for finally turning up. Let's do that and then haunted hand. Ah, perfect. Okay, uh let's time warp again. Then we'll Activate our current. I'm going to force ignite our current and then move forward with that. What's this? This wants a tax blade? Yeah, it does want to uh, tax blade. Which is going to be harder to ignite, I think. Step through. Oh, no, wait, never mind. It's not, of course, because that'll just do that. Then we step through. Getting those again. All right. You fast forward, which does move us two across. Interesting. Let's double time warp and hexagon. Ah, it should have been the defend. The hexagon was going to play at the end of the turn anyway. That'll activate. Two times. Time warp, time warp. And then it's just like, you know, it's an inferno. So good. None of these are new. Officially, we are now at the point that none of them are new. We do often have an ethereal card in hand. In fact, almost always because the instant infernos become ethereal after we draw. So I'm going to take the ghost shield because it's two applications of block, which with our scaling decks is very good. Uh, I don't want another shot, though. One event. So, what's at hand? Uh, probably going to do it again, right? Okay. Let's time warp. Step through. It's the next one. Then we'll time warp and... Fast forward, gets to the next one, then we'll time warp. Step through, get to the next one. I'll probably time warp after that, I feel. 
you know, for a change of pace, uh, then maybe I fast forward. And get the... Like some sort of a time warp. And I will defend and tap. Then at the end of the turn, the Hexagard goes off. And you see even more block. Here's the ultimate question. Am I going to take Thorns back? Thankfully, I'm intangible this turn, so it's the right turn to check. Uh, before I check, though, Phantom Cloak and Ghost Shield. No, I don't. Cool. Attack, step through. Then we'll defend and float and advance. We can use time warp and then instant inferno to go for the back line. Nice. Let's just pop a defend and then... Wait. Advancing guard. That is the ability to... Uh, I, I have enough advance through my other tech, which is good. Heat metal. Uh, after soul burn detonates on this enemy, apply 12 soul. I like that. I like that. Don't want it for this deck, though. Okay. Start out with a haunted hand. And again. Let's go for Donu's power, giving us an attack. If your hand can take... Gotta love being able to kill pretty easily, because then I follow up with a step through to... Oh, I mean, no other, better, no other better way of describing it, but step through. And we even get to complete... Another. Do we have enough attacks? We don't have enough attacks to trigger this, so I'm going to fast forwards. Just triggering instantly, and then Empowered Flame, triggering that one instantly. Really feels like I should use an instant Inferno right now. Fine. I'm going to do it again. If nothing else, I've simplified the fight to just be one Spheric Guardian, which is pretty handleable. Yeah, okay, we'll float to advance. Uh, I should have done the time warp first because it would have returned on the advance anyway. Then... We'll time warp, baby. Hit a hex guard as well. Okay, tackle, turn it up, turn it up. And then I permit you to die. Fairy in a bottle would have been nice. Eerie expedition, add a random ethereal card to your hand. It costs zero this turn, at zero cost itself. Sure. Jump inside to heal to full HP, but I lose 10 max. The Moai head. He decides to take a slight detour to one of the Beyond's greatest monuments and this an enormous stony head emerging from a large wall segment. The head's mouth is wide open and reveals large intimidating teeth stained red with blood. The statue, or the search surface rather, of the statue is riddled with pictographs that seem to indicate people throwing themselves into the mouth of this head and being devoured. I'm gonna uh, take the health, I think, actually. You step up to the mouth of the statue, waiting for the statue to activate, knowing that you will have to pay its cost in blood. With a short time, the huge molars slam down from above, crushing you whole. Darkness. Sometime later, from within the dark, you see a sliver of light. And here, what you now realize is the sound of stony teeth slowly rising upwards. You leave restored, the statue's magic flowing through you. Don't you dare curse me. Please, please don't.
Just fast forward past that. Then defend. Seer. I have a Haunting Echo and then the ability to change that if that was going to be negative. Okay, the Multi-Strike is literally the best one you could do because I'm intangible this turn, so. Easy, of course. Uh, let's... Do we need to Haunted Hand yet? Time Warp. Pull that back. Then we can Hex a level even. If only I had Shuriken or Kunai. Oh my god. Uh, okay, Haunted Hand. Step through, then Time Warp. Go shield defend. Get four extra block for the next turn. Okay, it's just fast forward. We get to the final one. We like cloak, attack, guys, hexagon. If I empowered flame right now, it'll trigger the entire effect. Oh, actually, that's okay. Triggers the entire effect. We can then turn it up. Tackle. I'm not going to re-roll that, just in case. We were already comfy enough. All right, random ethereal. Let's go slash. Nice. That'll do it. Same that we've seen before. Do I want a second Phantom Cloak? Yeah. Yeah, I do. No. Oh, thank you. Oh, my heart almost stopped when I thought that was about to crash. Just that stutter. Okay. It's okay. We're all good. Uh, it is time warp, defense, tackle. Tackle and ghost shield as well. Okay, so you're not using any of the orbs that you currently have out. Let's... I mean, we should just fast forward, right? Possible to pass that one. So I can time warp, step through, and pass the next one. Time warp again. Don't use power. Probably shouldn't have played ages ago. Backtrack smack. I'm not. I don't know. I, I'm not a not a backtracking type. Or am I? This will ignite my current, but then it will backtrack me. And then if I advance into the next one, that's going to unignite. Which is kind of fine. I need I need a little more time in the setup. Sure. Actually, I could then instantly uh, uh, Inferno and just get an extra point of strength. As well as blow up the enemy as much as I can. Four damage for each random ignited ghost flame. That's not that much damage. I don't think it's enough. Okay, we're intangible this turn, which is nice. Also got an absolute wealth of different things we get to play. That, and then advance. And yes, that undoes that, but then we can time warp and... What? Didn't get an attack, but we might get one. An attack. Eerie Expedition, Eerie Expedition, Paranormal Form. Okay, let's actually have a look. Let's try and keep an eye on exactly how effective that ends up being for us. It's 10 damage so far from it. Uh, that's about to ignite the Dark Orb, so. Get rid of that one. Oh, but I was intangible that turn. I should have let him. Should have let him and then remove the future ones. Haunting Echo isn't good here, but it'll be good next. 
So I you know, just super turn it up. And then I get to time warp, time warp. All right. Defend and Haunted Hand gets this ignited. Then let's float in order to get to the next one. Advance. I'm like double step through to do the same thing right now. Oh, different attack. Nope, just step throughs. Okay, step through. Triggers that. And then we'll step through the next one. We'll step through to trigger that again. And then maybe go for an instant inferno for the kill. Feel something evil at your very core. I've broken all of the seals. It is time for the final act. You brought him back. Calipers? All these moves. This is the same kit that you had last time, right? Okay. Makes it a little easy for us. Uh, let's eerie expedition see what we get. Spectre swell. Okay, that's an attack. So I can attack, attack, and then uh, step through. And then I can also... Fast forward past that. I like it. Attack. Moves this to the next one. Fast forward to the next. And turn it up. And then a hexagon at the very end of the turn for another draw for the next turn. Okay. Let's. Attack haunted. Love it. Love it. Let's Donu's power. Unleash spirits. Deal nine damage from a random enemy. Repeat for each ethereal card in your exhaust palm. Hmm. Hmm. That actually looks pretty dang good. You know, underestimating it prior, I feel. Do that one and see if we have any ability to advance. We don't necessarily here. Ah, I really wish the Haunting Echo was the decrease cost there. Yeah, 50 is enough here. 60? Oh, does it include itself? It must have included itself, yeah. There were only 50 in there. Well, only 50's worth, at least. Time warp, step through. And back, time warp, time warp. I mean, I do need some serious defense this turn, so let's just defend, defend, defend. Oh, and then heck, we might as well double time warp. This Inferno doesn't do anything there for us. See you and then float so that we can get to the next one as well as complete the previous. Then we get the time warp for the double attack. I, I love how this is working so much. We ignite it again and move forward. Hexa level to finish out that also. Uh, let's hexa guard, turn it up, and then I inferno next turn. Uh, sorry, I didn't pronounce that right. There we go. Or a Calcum, as well as a Power Potion I don't get to have. Another step through. Do I really need... I don't need another step through. It's been a while since I've really needed... Okay, quick study. Choose one of the three boss... Uh, choose one of three bosses, rather. Gain a copy of each of its boss cards. They cost one, uh, zero until played. Ah, that's super powerful. I uh, can't see its unupgraded version. Jack of all trades. Let's do that. First time you retract each turn. Gain energy and draw a card. Retract. 
I like that. I like that. Could really, uh, could really build like a full retraction deck. Like I'm already seeing, you can make a retraction deck. You can make a no ghost flame deck. You can make a soul burn deck. Like this, and yet they all, they don't feel like four separate archetypes that are in the same character. They feel like four interrelated ones. And I, I don't mean to, you know be talking archetypically to say that there are exclusive ways that you should and should not play. Um, I'm, I'm just using it as a general way to talk about the the different things each character can take advantage of in their base core, uh, core set. Because I know that some people are kind of like very against the term uh, archetype. Incineration, deal four damage to a random, uh, and apply four soul burn to a random enemy four times. Upgrades five. Ghost flame wall. Gain 16 block wherever you, uh, whenever you attack this turn. Apply six soul burn to the attacker. There's also that bright ritual there. Uh, I probably just cut a card, right? Cut one of the bad cards from the deck. Seeing it defend significantly less often feels like a good time. You know, we're not going to be able to win the fight unless we're jacked as all hell, so... Let's get that final lift in. Dex Potion 2. Mm. Did not find the second attack I was looking for there, unfortunately. I probably just want to, like, hard cast turn it up this turn. I'll have seven turns of that, thank you. Ooh, those impact, those cards. Ow, that's going to be a problem. Uh, let's start with the step through, though. Okay. Time warp. Do we want to defend fast forward? It's for 24 damage. Does that matter that much? No, it's about whether or not we can set up. The thing that I probably want to dupe. Text so just in case we find it. Icky at a slime status in your hand. I gotta play Dono's power here. You can't can't ignore that. Dynamic blow. Ethereal, if the active ghost uh, ghost flame is ignited, apply 15 soul burn. If not, deal 11 damage. Okay. There's a lot overwhelming there. Please, I need to get to Hexa level because that's the card that I need to double cast with the dupe. Actually, I probably should have just upgraded that, to be entirely honest. Let's fast forward. Get a time warp out and then a step through, getting to the next card as well. I don't need to use the Instant Inferno here, do I? No, those are probably best saved for the champs. I was considering double playing the, the Phantom Cloak, but I feel like I'm not actually gaining defense from defensive cards anymore. So I'm going to double do the Hexa level. Okay, then Time Warp. We'll... Phantom Cloak into a step through to get to the next one. Use another Time Warp Eerie Expedition, possibly, for another skill. Didn't get another skill. It's okay. Use another Phantom Cloak, though. All right. Bewildered. Whenever you play another card in your hand, muddle your hand, then discard this. Let's get rid of that. Don't need to deal with it. We can hex it as well for the draw, and then... Time warp because that doesn't end the turn. When drawn, add ethereal to all cards in your hand. That's fine. 
Uh, it also didn't seem to do it when drawn, right? Oh, right. The, the tackle was drawn after it. So it's not like you draw a whole hand and if the hand contains that card, they're all ethereal. It's only the cards before it. Uh, okay. Time warp. Step through. Easy. Gives me another time warp back. Haunted hand gets us another step through, which is essential here. I mean, the, the slimed is now ethereal. Love it. Let's give you another impact. Pop out another defend and then tackle again. Yeah, slime burns itself. The model cost is retained on these as well. Important to know. If you play another card, model your hand, then discard this. This one already did that. Okay. Let's time warp. Tackle. Then we'll force ignite our current one and move forward. Time warp, time warp. And I'm going to force ignite and move forward. Again, I'm not going to use the instant inferno yet. Could use it here to try and round out the fight, but the enemy isn't really doing anything, so no reason to bother closing it. Okay. We've already got this, right? Defend Hexagard. Blow and then just go through. Attack. Again. Let's pop even more. That soul burn on you. I like that Meow comes back on that turn as days. It gives you a lot more that you can do. Uh, okay. Fast forward is very important here. It's the ability to actually capitalize on that. But we should time warp first. Fast forward. Bring back the time warp. Then we can use the haunting blow to double up a huge amount of soul fire on you again. Throw out a dynamic blow for even more soul fire. And so Fast forward? Yeah, I'll do that. I don't need to, is the thing, though. If I don't need to, why should I? Uh, okay, now I need to pop off the, the flame. Okay. Gets the target down, but we should also try and advance as many of these as possible. Perfect. So your second champion comes out, and that is the Watcher. You do only summon three, despite there being four characters. I could just pop defend, defend, and then step through. And in fact, I will. Defend, defend, step through, gets us back to time warps, cast both of those in order to get the extra effect as well. And then see a tackle. As long as we keep cycling, we are generating so much defense. It's great. Fast forward in the same space again, and then this is two attacks. Fast forward is no longer getting because we're not returning the other cards from the grave. So sure. I'll do that, and then Hexa, and then Time Warp, Defend, and Dynamic Blow in order to... Get him. I love the calipers effect right now. It's, it's so impactful. Let's go for... I mean, 18 damage is more than 15 soul burn right now, so I should probably attack with that one. Then hex it just for the draw. Through. Probably should hex it first, as it turns out. Okay. Defend. Step through advances, and then I step through and it doesn't advance, but I can Haunting Echo on that. That would be more Soul Burn Knight. Oh, haunting Echo there. And step through, hit you. Uh, whoops. Four. And next, never mind, we could have actually gotten to this one because of the, the time warps, which would have meant that that is where I should have played the, the loop. An extra 27 block as well as an extra, extra strength. Okay. 
long as we got that on. And a little bit more defense for the next turn. And now, this one's good fun. We go... And dynamic. We'll step through. Going to the next one. Time warp. Do I just want to play out the cards here? Actually, I'm just going to hex and kill him. Getting you back. Time warp, hexa, time warp. And again, get another 31 off. Okay, beautiful. We're rounding this one out. Two attacks, two attacks, two attacks. Two Blow. Okay, so we can do it in the next hand if I wanted to. We'll tackle, then we'll haunting echo. Going for 66. Application of soul fire there. Force Ignite to do it again and move forward. Attack. And then I'm going to instant Inferno. Doesn't have to kill the enemy. All it has to do is set me up to do it later. Like that. And there goes Meow. Emerald Heart Blessing at the start of combat with the Beyond's boss. Oh! I get what they're doing now! Okay, okay. So, the time that I didn't have any of them... Wait, no. I, I don't remember if there was a run that I didn't have any of them, but uh, I, I had the ability to remove three cores... And then against the Ironclad, if it was the Beyond, I would have the ability to remove block. So they give you a counter card to the Beyond's boss. So actually collecting and breaking the keys makes the Beyond boss easier. But that makes sense because they intend for you then to treat the last boss as Meow. I like it. There's the dead Meow. As well as the heart reigning triumphant over the dead heroes. And finally, the desolation of the area around the spire. This is a two hour episode at this point. And frankly, I wouldn't have it any other way. We unlock some extra cards. We get gifts from beyond unplayable ethereal afterlife. Whenever an ethereal card is exhausted, draw one card next turn. There's also Power from Beyond, Unplayable Ethereal Afterlife, Gain Energy and Draw a Card next turn. Love things like that. Flames from, uh, from Beyond uh, does the same thing, but it also... Unplayable Ethereal Afterlife. Its effects activate. So I, it, this would trigger the, the, the buff that this power would otherwise trigger when it dies. And it's just trying to tell you that this is giving you an effect that lasts for the fight. I think is what's happening there, at least. Uh, apply 12 Soul Burn to all enemies at the start of your next turn. Although, I got a, got a, got a question here. And that is, do I unlock the next character or do I have to do the same thing in the start of the next episode? Yep, haven't completed a run with the Hexagos, so we're going to have to trash a run at the start of the next episode. It's okay. These kinds of things happen. Very, very minor kind of uh, concern, if you could even call it that. Uh, just takes a, a load and a break. We'll do the start of the next episode for the moment. My name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire, specifically the content expansion mod Downfall. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my contents of the game past, present, and future, as well as an ability to uh, get the game, Slay the Spire, and Downfall themselves for yourself to play. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.